Hey, boys and girls, happy Friday. We made it. Uh, <laughs> I'm such a goober head. I just recorded this just now and on OBS, and I, I had the microphone muted. So, dad, gum it. I'll, I'll do it again here, okay? Um, okay, so I'll say, uh, maybe I can get even shorter than I did just now. Okay, so here we go. So, we had the, uh, the emissary stream yesterday. Uh, how did it go? What was your impression? What did you think? Um, you can talk about any of the guys, but if you want to, uh, this is my channel, so if you want to focus on what I was saying, uh, it's probably be more uh, appropriate. Uh, and, you know, I tried, guys. It was uh, it was not uh, the setting of it as, as kind of the, the plans got more and more refined. The setting of it was not something to have a big old, like, a, a suggestion discussion. Uh, but that said, I did. They wanted to ask what was a, they wanted us to present what was going on in our community. So, uh, as kind of the, one of the realism uh in that headspace, right? That's I felt like I, yeah, I owed it to them to kind of show here's what is brewing in our community and uh, try to do it justice. Uh, and it's a, a few takeaways from that. A is I need to talk a little bit uh, slower, right? And B, uh, I need to work on the messaging a bit, right? But that's kind of what uh, I want to chat about. This will be kind of this won't be a, a fancy stream. I'm not going to do anything crazy with this one. This will just be uh, just me talking about something. Um, so apologies in advance. You have to look at my ugly mug for the next uh, however long this takes, right? Uh, but stick stick around. Let's, let's see how this goes. I'm not trying to pick on Sneaky or Iron or any of those guys at all. I want to talk. I'm trying to talk about use use that as a as a stepping point to talk about a bigger uh, uh, topic here. Okay. So what's interesting to me is how um, the second uh, I kind of mentioned uh, the more realism hardcore crowd, right? Uh, Sneaky's mind immediately went to, oh, like the Arma series, right? And I'm not blaming him for making that uh, distinction. It's just interesting to me that's where people, that's uh, kind of where people's minds go. Either you're co goofy like Fortnite or, man, you're the Arma side. And it's, uh, I don't blame him. I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers or anything. It's just, man, this is a huge topic, right? It's a huge thing. Um... And I wanted to say, I wanted to kind of be like, uh, no, not at all like Arma. That's not what this is about, right? Not at all what this is about. Uh, and so I need to work on the message there a bit. But that's kind of what, I'm, what I want to talk about uh, today, is unpack some, uh, some feedback on there. Is it's interesting, eh, when we talk about um, gaming um, as being kind of this, let's say, uh, theater for the mind, let's say. Uh, this whole and this whole concept of realism or something being realistic, right? These uh, these quasi statements, these uh, characterizations that uh, it's a lot to unpack there. Uh, the sense of how or how we are can get immersed into something, right? Um, and I guess again, uh, Sneaky, for watching this, if anybody, uh, please, I'm not I'm not making a jab at Sneaky at all. I'm just talking, right? What's, and I'm using him as like an example here because that's, that's what this came from, is it's interesting that you take someone, have you shot a gun before? Uh, not so much. I shot a pistol once or twice, right, at a range somewhere. Uh, rifles? No, 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 not, I just, I saw one disassembled, field stripped, maybe uh, I get to hold it and then maybe swing it around a little bit. Okay, okay, fair enough. Have you ever uh, shot in a more active engagement? Uh, where you have to move and okay, clearly no, right? But just go with this, go with this thought I'm tracing it. Okay, no. Okay, have you ever shot in an environment uh, where you have other people who are also trying to shoot you? And again, it could, I'm, I don't mean this literally, uh, like with live rounds. I mean it more uh, force on force simulations. Could be even paintball or something, right? Uh, most of these people, no, I haven't. So, okay, interesting, fair enough. Again, not, not, I'm not trying to knock anybody, I'm just saying, okay, that's where we have to start. The, where can we start our conversation as a jumping point, right? No, I haven't. Okay, fair enough. If you haven't done it yourself uh, physically, have you at least studied it in depth from like an outsider's perspective? Have you studied footage? Could be from realistic films, could be from uh, CCTV footage that's out there, could be from even just reading after action reports or accounts that people make of what goes on physiologically, what they feel like they experience, what goes on in their bodies and their minds and all that kind of stuff and their performance level. 
Have you dove into those topics at all? No, I haven't. Ah, okay. And yet, so there's no, 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 no. And yet, that said, people feel like they have the capacity to make a judgment as to how realistic, and again, I use ick, uh, right? Something is in a game sense. So they'll say, oh, but, and it happened again, it happened in the, in the podcast yesterday. But man, Tarkov is so realistic. And I think the, com the conversation I'm trying to kind of have and introduce to people is this idea of no, it's not. And I don't mean that to knock Tarkov or whatever game, Arma or whatever game it is. I'm trying to expand the conversation out bigger, right? Um, so I used to play, back when I was a kid, I, I started playing games even back when it was DOS. You had to learn MS-DOS and everything, typing in your commands to launch programs. Old school games where, uh, you know, original first person shooters where you just had to, had to use the mouse and keyboard, right? I mean, no mouse, just a keyboard, just the arrows, space to shoot, right? Reloading, no, who cares? We're just walking around and shooting. The very, very beginning days of it. And it's interesting how to jump from that whenever the mouse was introduced um, and how that was revolutionary, right? And the kind of the conversation, I'm, the awareness, I'm trying to enter into the zeitgeist or whatever, is this awareness, this realization that even from all these years, right, the mouse as an input scheme for modeling human interaction has gone nowhere. It's pretty much the same way it was after all these years and years and years and years, right? And that's interesting to me. So here we have this uh, input scheme, the control scheme, right? And we've, plas we've kind of taped on all these different masks, right? Okay, and that's the same input scheme, first person shooter now with jumping out of a plane, right? Okay, now with uh, building and something in Fortnite, what would it, I mean, take your pick, right? Now you're a soldier in armor and you have to walk for miles and get on a transport and go to an LPOP and plan all this stuff out, right? And in my, uh, is it realistic? Yes, you could say it's realistic, right? Uh, are there different uh, are there different uh, gradations along the spectrum, right? Of uh, is it something more or less? Or yeah, we we can go and wade in those waters if we want. But the point I'm trying to make is no, it's not about that. It's not about that. It's about how is the human element of this represented in the game? You can say, well, we have vaulting, we've got jumping, we have. There are some games that have a certain amount of uh, delay or a lag or again the weapon having a little bit of momentum, right? And what I'm trying to let, let people understand is that even with those little bitty baby steps, it's still not even close. Not even close, right? Um, and I mean that in a respectful way, right? But I'm just trying to get, get to see that unless we make that connection, of a mouse and a keyboard is not even close. Until we're able to cross that river together, I don't think much progress will be made. Um, and so I guess that's kind of what's what's interesting to me is um, is as a concept is like I'm trying to present it in ways to let people know that okay you don't have to have firearm experience. You can go, like I said, do a time and motion study. And if you compare kind of the point I was trying to make, and I didn't, I didn't make it very well. I kind of got rushed. Again, I talked too fast. Um, is if you look at an FPS trainer, uh, just type it into Google, YouTube, or whatever, you'll see what I'm talking about. People training their mouse skills uh, to be able to, to smooth as the they like have all these different terms, flicking, smoothing, right? All blah blah blah. And it's all about training your your uh, your hand and your forearm and your shoulder, even depending on how you do this stuff, to be spot on the money, right? To be able to jump from head to head to head to head to person, 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 person. 
And what's interesting is, if you take a scene like that, you can say, well, that takes a lot of skill. Okay, now to see where you're coming from, yes, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bash that, right? It's a, and then I'm a nerd too on some level. Yes, that takes skill, let's say. But it's so far removed from reality. And how you would know that is A, either get up and walk around your room yourself and really pay attention to, again, the footwork video I did, uh, all that kind of stuff. So what I was trying to do is just spend some time in the world and take a critical eye to these things in a learning sense. And you'll see that, whoa, wait a second. We are way off base. So again, you compare. Compare first person, uh, the FBS trainers, and you'll see the dots they end up shooting at, clicking on, right, become super small, like ridiculously small, right? And you see how quickly, boom, 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 boom. Whoa, that's a lot of skill, right? And my challenge is, okay, but look at how long it takes people to engage man-sized targets in real life, right? On and hit, whether it's a score an A zone, right? Again, I don't want to get too technical on this. You got different zones when you're shooting man-sized targets, right? And those are scored differently in competitions. And it's just to show there's different, uh, they call them like terminal zones within the body. Uh, let's call them, uh, I don't want really to get too gruesome with it, but you just have diff different uh, good hits, bad hits, not so effective. Just the effectiveness of the hits on a, on a, on a target, right? Poss possibilities, right? Um, so you have A zone hits, you just definitely, definitely have one kind of like uh, the, that's kind of the upper thoracic. You have some oftentimes kind of shown on the face and it's trying to represent uh, the, the soft spots in the skull, right? But you're, what you're looking, if you're gonna go even deeper on that, you're looking at terminal hits and then you start looking at uh, the way I, I train a lot uh, is you train on bowling with bowling pins because you're saying, okay, you can impact lungs or whatever here. We're talking if you want to get a bowling pin, that's representing kind of the spinal cord, right? If you want to talk about something that stops a threat, okay, it's, a, it's not just, oh, I hit him in the shoulder, I hit him in the whatever, I hit him in the... If you have someone, depending on their mental state, blah, 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 what you're looking are, at are terminal hits that interrupt the body's ability to function from like a physical standpoint, okay? Uh, so you even have certain things, it's not taught very much, but you even have things in the, in the hip girdle that come into play, right? Um, and you're talking about, uh, I don't, I don't want to go that way too much, but hopefully if, if you're interested in this, just search up, look up terms on your own, you can see what I'm talking about. But what I want you to see is the pacing of someone engaging those that size of a target at different ranges, the pacing of that, of squaring up, of acquiring the sights, of acquiring the target, of engaging at that uh, level of accuracy, how long does it take? And not only how long does it take, but what is what are the results that come from it? Is it a 90% accuracy, 80% accuracy, 70% accuracy, right? And then you can start going, if you want to, if we want to take games, maybe, maybe we say that's the ballpark for games, right? Let's stop there. But if you want to go even the next layer, layer maybe we start diving into that from, a, again, as a spectrum. Maybe we introduce a little bit more in the sense of things when, when uh, it hits the fan and you actually have that stuff coming back at you. And you have those adrenaline dumps, you have that fight or flight, you have all those really physiological central nervous system type engagements the gross motor skills, fine motor skills, all those things are affected in such a big way, right? And depending on the person's mental state, that a lot of that uh, capacity diminishes significantly as well, right? Um, so, the point I'm trying to make is, before we say something's realistic, not realistic, rather than focusing on the mathy side of it, um, and I'm sorry, I don't, I'm having a hard time if this is the same video I made before, if it's the one I made after, uh, so I might have to cut this, cut this part out if I haven't talked about it yet. But if, if we say that the, the bar for realism, are, if it's the ones and zero side, the mechanical side of um, materials and objects and relationships, right? The physics, the, if we say that's our uh, kind of where we set the bar, 
It's like, man, we're, we're missing out on the whole other side of the picture, right? That what makes this play out in an interesting way, it's the limitations of human movement and human awareness. Um, and these wacky and zany situations could be just as fun to escape into on a game uh, with this realistic bent as it is with this unrealistic bent, right? Like, think about, again, just look at a racing sim or a racing game, even an arcade one, right? Having cars that behave even somewhat realistically is still a blast to race your friends, friends, right? You can play Mario Kart. Oh, this is still fun, right? And even Mario Kart has drifting, has, you know, turn radiuses, all that kind of stuff. And that's fun, right? Even if you go full bore, where I have my racing sim, my cockpit, my wheel, my force feedback, even, you know, triple screens or VR headset, whatever, that's fun too, right? And that's kind of the discussion, I'm, the awareness I'm trying to build, is that the setting of the environment can be just as zany or just as realistic as we want it, right? That spectrum, playing in that spectrum, that doesn't change. If we get the human element involved in it, that's more uh, real life, lifelike and plausible, that stuff can be just as cool, right? So anyways, that's, uh, that's my rambling a little bit. Um, and that's something I'd love to explore uh, and dive into more. I'll keep, I'll keep trying to hit at it, uh, keep trying to write about it, keep trying to explore it, keep trying to see new ways of representing it. But I guess this is kind of where I'm reaching out to you guys too in the sense of if there are people you know of that would make a good discussion to talk with on like a higher level, let me know. Who are these people? Could I reach out to them? Could we have, I, I don't do much Twitch stuff, I don't have, really have too much time during the day for it, but if I could schedule something, I'd love to do it. Um, in the sense that, man, are, again, broaden my horizon. Who are people I could talk to? Are there game designers out there? Are there um, people who are into the, I have actually that I actually have some hands-on technical know-how with the programming side, with the, are there people that can make to get them kind of rolling in this muck with me? Um, and just exploring it together. Um, that'd be cool. Um, and on that front, I'm kind of fledgling through uh, some Unity stuff. I'm more of a Ruby guy myself, but uh, again, the stuff I'm doing with C Sharp and Unity in the background, it's kind of cool. And I kind of, I had a big epiphany moment last night. <laughs> it, one of those deals where it's like, duh, I should have, I don't know why it took me so long to uh, realize this. Creativity is an interesting, uh, an interesting thing, huh? and the human mind, how it works. But, uh, Part three, and part three, uh, the, the spinning, you know, doing 360, 720, you know, well, that kind of stuff, spinning, spinning, spinning. If, if we allow, if we have to allow someone to do this, it's like, duh, we don't have to let someone do this. I don't know why I didn't, you know, there's this thing with cameras where you clamp it. You can clamp the, the range on up and down. <laughs> I even programmed that in. Up and down, right? You limit it there. So someone doesn't look up and the camera just keeps circling over and over and over, right? Uh, these nauseous uh, loops. Then they're going down. You can't just barrel roll. All, you put clamps on there. Well, duh. Put, why don't you put clamps on the 180 range on the horizontal? So anyway, that's, that's a big, like, duh, I'm exploring now. That mixed with uh, kind of culling and masking of objects, again, to, for the pacing. It's becoming very interesting, right? Mixed with part two and the weight involved and the getting a body as being separate, getting very, it's getting very, very cool, huh? So anyway, that's where I'm at. Thanks for listening. Uh, but I hope I come across as someone who wants to have discussions, right? I'm not trying to be a, a, a Nimrod who's just ramming my point across. I'm not trying to be, a, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to come across that way. And if I do, please let me know because I want to improve on that. I want to call, come across as someone who's agreeable, who loves to talk about things and uh, really get in the nitty gritty, uh, who doesn't, I'm someone, I don't mind. If someone asks me why or how or what or, you know, that does not offend me at all. I love that kind of stuff, right? And hopefully, for those who are familiar with my posts on Reddit uh, and on the forums and stuff, hopefully you've seen that side of my personality. Uh, man, I, I am open, even if you want to call me names or yell at me or whatever, hey, I'll take it because there's something behind there we can unpack together, right? So anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for rambling. Thanks for, thanks for listening to my rambling. Thanks for being part of this. Um, uh, if you have any ideas or something you want to dive into or just comments about my, my thing of how people frame their awareness, have you done this? No, 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 no. And yet 
you still feel like you have a, a place to say, it's interesting. I don't mean that to knock somebody. I mean that as, again, just a broader discussion of it's fascinating what our minds do, our confidence level about things. I love these things of biases and uh, incentives and stuff like that. That's a whole, whole other side of things I like to explore and I've learned a lot about over the years. Um, but anyway, thanks for listening. I'm shutting this off. You guys enjoy your weekend. <laughs> don't listen to rambling on me. Uh, and take care. I'll catch you guys next time. Adios.